1. The Unsolved Case of Her Parents This year marks the sixth year since Gu Ling came to the orphanage. The police officers who had been responsible for investigating her parents' death found her again for some unknown reason. The orphanage was small, so the director had to give up her office for the two criminal investigators to talk with Gu Ling. Gu Ling knew it would still be those questions that she could answer without thinking because she had answered them so many times before. Suppressing her impatience, she no longer held any hope for solving the case. The two officers methodically asked, How old were you that year? Gu Ling softly replied, 12. That year, Gu Ling was 12 years old and already capable of understanding the abnormal relationship between her parents. She could even grasp the reasons behind it. She loved her mother the most, but somehow sympathized more with her father. It was her mother who first took a liking to her father. After learning that her father had failed his college entrance exam, she cried and begged her grandmother to send a large gift to the matchmaker. Her father's family was very poor, with only three small straw-roofed houses in the wheat fields. He was an only child with no siblings to help out. So, her mother not only persuaded her grandparents not to ask for a bride price, but also brought a decent dowry when she married him. This was probably why her father ultimately agreed to the marriage. It was said that from their matchmaking to their wedding, it took only a month. Shortly after the simple wedding, her mother became pregnant with Gu Ling. Fate played a trick on them. When her father returned home with the pregnancy diagnosis, they encountered a postman with the belated acceptance letter in his hand. It was said that her father held a piece of paper in each hand and suddenly burst into tears. Her father had been accepted into a prestigious university. Her grandparents were overjoyed and took out money for her parents to have a color photo taken in town. Gu Ling often recalled this photo. Her father stood straight, his face brimming with joy. Her mother stood behind him with a humble expression, cautiously placing her hand on his shoulder. This was the way Gu Ling was familiar with her parents' interaction. She tried to get close to her father, but was always afraid he would be annoyed by her. Her father hid his marital status to attend school, leaving the pregnant mother to do the hardest farm work. Even her grandparents had complained about her father's indifference towards her mother. From the time her mother was pregnant to Gu Ling's birth, her father acted as if these two people didn't exist in his life. On the day Gu Ling was born, her grandfather went to town to call her father with the news. Her father responded with a few absent-minded hmms over the phone and didn't even ask whether the baby was a boy or a girl. After graduation, her father was assigned to work in the city, returning home for only a week every six months. Gu Ling understood from a young age that her father did not love her mother or herself. In her eyes, her father was more like a stranger devoid of any warmth. She had never received even a single piece of candy from him. Yet in her memory, her mother never complained about her father. She openly admired and adored him. Whenever someone praised her father, her mother would smile happily, her face flushing with excitement. When Gu Ling started elementary school, her father began returning home more frequently. Gu Ling was terrified of seeing him because whenever he was home, the house was filled with yelling and scolding. Plates and bowls were shattered until there were barely any left. She saw her father constantly shouting at her mother with a hoarse voice, I have to divorce you. She remembered the veins bulging on his face, his handsome features completely gone. Yet her mother always sat silently, without any reaction, calm and quiet. When pushed too far, her mother would only gently say, I will not divorce. Her voice was soft but firm. Her grandparents would then loudly scold her father for being heartless and ungrateful. As a result, her father would always leave, frustrated. Gradually, seeing no resolution, her father stopped coming home. Her grandmother said her father had accepted his fate, and since then, her mother's smile returned, and she took even better care of her grandparents. When Gu Ling was 12, her grandparents passed away one after the other. One night, her father returned home late. Gu Ling heard his voice and ran out of her room, standing by her parents' bedroom door, peeking through the crack. This time, her father did not lose his temper. He knelt at her mother's feet, desperately begging her for a divorce. He said he had met a girl and had fallen in love. 
Gu Ling didn't quite understand what her father meant by a reunion from a past life, but she understood that this time her father was more determined than ever. She heard him say, It doesn't matter if you disagree. I've already resigned. Tomorrow, I will leave with her, and you will never be able to find us. Her mother finally realized that she could not stop him this time. She held him and cried loudly. Her father remained silent for a long time before sighing. You don't understand. There is the greatest distance in the world between us. You stand next to me, but I can't see you at all. Surprisingly, her mother seemed to understand this. Her gaze gradually turned cold. She begged her father to spend one last night at home, like a real husband and father. Her father agreed. The next morning, her mother calmly signed her name on the divorce papers her father had prepared. As her father was about to leave, Gu Ling saw her mother hold his hand and say with certainty, You will come back. My daughter and I will be waiting for you at home. Her father paused, then shook off her mother's hand with a look of disgust and hurried away, almost fleeing. 2. The Unexpected Return After her father left, Gu Ling was very sad, worried that her mother would collapse from the grief. To her surprise, her mother showed no signs of sadness. Instead, she was busier than ever, spending all day working in the wheat fields. At that time, the wheat heads were filling out, and everyone was busy making scarecrows to scare away the birds eating the wheat. Her mother also made a small, skinny scarecrow. Her mother's hands were skillful, and Gu Ling thought that her mother's scarecrow was the most exquisite and lifelike of all. The skinny scarecrow stood in the open wheat field, with its hands raised high. To Gu Ling, it seemed like a pose of utter despair. Days passed, and her mother would always hold Gu Ling and smile, saying, Don't be afraid, your father will come home soon. This time, he won't leave again. Gu Ling would look at her mother in astonishment, thinking she was just trying to comfort her. However, she could see that the anticipation and joy on her mother's face were genuine. Six months later, the police came to their house. Hearing her father's name from the police officers, her mother hurriedly took Gu Ling to a train station in the city, where they picked up her father, who looked like a beggar. Seeing her father in rags, emitting a foul odor, Gu Ling was terrified. Her father looked at her and her mother with vacant eyes, as if looking at air. Her mother carefully wiped the grease and dirt off his hands and face with wet tissues, and then took his hand and led him to the waiting taxi. Her mother's expression was calm and untroubled. As the car bumped along and her father fell into a deep sleep, Gu Ling saw her mother gently lean her head on his shoulder, with a slight smile on her face. Her father was like a frozen little animal, dull and numb, completely unable to take care of himself. Yet to Gu Ling, he no longer had that lofty, distant aura that had always kept people away. Instead, he seemed more like a member of the family. Her mother took meticulous care of him, always remembering what he liked to eat. She personally bathed him, shaved him, and cut his hair with hands as gentle as feathers. Gradually, her father began to say simple words and would smile faintly at funny scenes on TV. It took a full two months for him to gradually return to a normal state. He had never been this well, never relied so much on Gu Ling and her mother, or on this soul warmth. Her parents never mentioned the divorce again. On the day her father returned, her mother found the signed divorce papers in his inner pocket. Gu Ling saw her expressionless mother throw the papers into the stove. Gu Ling always wondered why her father didn't go find that girl and how he ended up as a mindless beggar at the train station. When her father was willing to go for walks, Gu Ling would accompany him to their wheat field. Every time he saw the skinny scarecrow her mother made, he would stand quietly and look at it for a long time. Just when Gu Ling thought her parents would finally live together like a normal loving couple, something unexpected happened. One day, without any warning, her parents committed suicide together in the wheat field, leaving no note or message behind. Did your parents show any unusual behavior before they died? Did they tell you anything? A police officer's question finally pulled Gu Ling's thoughts back to reality. Gu Ling still expressionlessly replied in a low voice, No. The police officers, having gained nothing, left with disappointed expressions. 
Gu Ling watched their figures disappear through the orphanage gates, exhaling a long breath before collapsing into a chair as if exhausted. A month later, on her 18th birthday, Gu Ling returned to her home, the dilapidated little house in the barren wheat field. She sat quietly until dusk, then took a bundle of incense and paper money and walked slowly to the center of the field. After her parents died, they were buried in the wheat field. Gu Ling knelt calmly before their joint grave, bowing, and then lit the incense and carefully burned the paper money. She didn't burn all the paper money she brought. Instead, she stood up and moved a few meters away from her parents' grave to another spot, where she knelt again and set out another portion of incense and paper money. Gu Ling gazed at the empty space and sighed deeply. No one knew what was buried there. Gu Ling had kept this secret for six years. Not just six years. She knew she would keep this secret for the rest of her life. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag three. The truth. Six years ago, on the last day Gu Ling saw her parents alive. Gu Ling had just come home from school when she saw her parents struggling. Her father was trying to leave the house for some unknown reason, and her mother was grabbing him, not letting him go. Her father roared in fury. I can't lie to myself anymore. I love her, and I'm going to find her. Her mother coldly clung to him, her nails almost digging into his arm. Her expression went from panic to despair, then to a chilling calm. Suddenly, her mother showed a smile that no sane person would have, and she murmured as if to herself. Find her? Didn't she tell you never to wait for her again? With that, she triumphantly and slowly took something out of her pocket. It was an unfamiliar woman's cell phone. Do you really want to know where she is? At the sight of it, her father seemed to be struck by lightning, his eyes filled with terror. He stood frozen for a long time, then suddenly turned back and grabbed her mother, his mouth open but unable to make any sound. Her mother looked at him and laughed, a smile of near-mad excitement. She pointed at his face and said, Yes, that's the expression I wanted to see. Do you understand? Her mother's eyes then looked outside the door. You both have the greatest distance in the world. She has always been by your side, but you couldn't see her. Her father stood there for a moment, then suddenly seemed to realize something. He turned and ran out of the house like a madman, heading straight for the wheat field. Guling followed her father, without thinking. When they reached the scarecrow, her heart began to race uncontrollably. She watched as her father carefully removed the straw from the scarecrow, handful by handful, until suddenly, a complete human skeleton appeared before them. Gu Ling, terrified, covered her mouth with her hand and stepped back repeatedly. She saw her father's hands trembling slightly as he gently held the small, white hand bones, tears streaming down his face. Gu Ling's mind went blank. She stumbled back home and told her mother what she had seen. Her mother had changed into new clothes and had even done her hair. She hugged Gu Ling and kissed her gently, then told her to stay home before staggering towards the wheat field. When night fell and Gu Ling went to find them, she saw her parents had both committed suicide in front of the scarecrow. It seemed her father had died first. He had cut his wrists with a folding knife he carried. When her mother arrived and saw her deceased husband, she did the same. That day, Gu Ling stood stupidly by her parents' bodies. The fragmented scenes and words she had seen and heard suddenly came together, fitting strangely into a complete picture. In that moment, it was as if a movie was playing in her mind. Because of his wife's stubbornness, a man couldn't get a divorce. He quit his promising job, deciding to start a new life with the woman he loved in another city, where no one could find them. Just thinking about it made his blood boil. They planned to give each other the greatest happiness. The man was sure of it. On the night before leaving, he returned home. He was there to make a final negotiation with his wife. That night, he broke his own rule and slept in the same bed with her, as if it were a ritual, starting and ending in the same place. Early in the morning, the man left home with the divorce agreement signed by his wife and headed straight to the train station. He was in such a hurry that every minute of separation felt like being on a roller coaster. He knew only the sight of the girl could calm him down. He waited for her in the station's waiting hall, arriving early at their agreed time. 
He longed for the moment when the girl would appear at the entrance with her luggage. How happy that moment would be. Finally free from all shackles, he let all things unrelated to love go to hell. They could have nothing, but they finally had each other. However, the girl never showed up. The agreed time had long passed, and he began to panic. He placed his luggage on the ground, no longer ready to board the train at any moment, and continued to wait until the train they were supposed to take had departed. He sat dejectedly on the bench, but his eyes remained fixed on the entrance. He hadn't given up hope. She had no reason not to come. In their years of love, she had never broken a promise. After some time, a text message stung his eyes. It was a simple message from her phone. I won't see you again. Don't wait. He stared at it in disbelief for a long time, as if it were an illusion. He exhaled lightly and continued to watch the entrance. Days later, there stood a man at the entrance of the waiting hall, with bloodshot eyes and on the verge of a mental breakdown. It was him. Sleepless and restless, his eyes remained fixed on the door. His luggage had long been taken by someone, but he didn't care. His world seemed to have shrunk to just that door in front of him. He kept calling the girl's phone, but it was always turned off. Eventually, his phone ran out of battery, yet he still held it tightly. Six months later, his wife came to the station and took away the man who now looked like a beggar. He never tried to find the girl again. He couldn't face the reality once more. The girl's silence said it all. He never knew that on the night before their elopement, his wife had secretly sent a text from his phone while he was asleep, changing their meeting place to the wheat field at their home. She also sent a message saying his phone was about to die and would soon be off, insisting they meet the next day. The girl, assuming something had come up, obediently followed his instructions, though the request was strange. The next day, while he anxiously waited at the train station, the girl arrived at the wheat field as planned. His wife was already waiting there. She killed the girl, meticulously stripped her to the bone, buried her clothes and flesh, and fashioned her bones into a scarecrow. After completing this gruesome task, she used the girl's phone to send him the don't wait message. That year, 12-year-old Gu Ling stood silently by her parents' corpses, tears streaming down her face. She knew this was the truth. She then made a decision unimaginable for a girl her age. She went home, grabbed a shovel, and dug a deep hole in an empty spot next to the wheat field. She buried the scarecrow along with the girl's phone and her father's phone. She carefully filled the hole, spent hours replanting wheat seedlings on it, then went home, put away the shovel, washed her hands and face, and reported it to the police. Now, 18-year-old Gu Ling stood quietly in front of the grave, reflecting on everything. After a long time, she shook her head and, as she left, softly said to the three graves in the wheat field, I don't know if what I did was right, but I know that all three of you are fools.